Hi there guys, welcome back. Today I got a very interesting video for you, at least I hope so, and that is combining two of my favorite things, except from shooting of course, and that is for one, tinkering with my air guns, and two, building custom setups. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today in this video. Part A of the video will be completely assembling a FX dynamic block from bare. There is nothing inside, all the parts are on my table there. I'm gonna show you exactly how to put everything together. So uh, I know some people like to reference my videos if they wanna do some work on their air gun in order to see how some parts are taken apart or put back together. So that's part A, completely assembling the FX dynamic block. It's exactly the same like the Pantera. So if you own a Pantera, the block is exactly the same, uh, except for some minor parts, which I will address later on in the video. And part two will consist out of building up a custom 30 caliber uh, bench rest gun out of the FX dynamic that just looks like. Holy moly! So we got a lot of work to do. Let's get to the tabletop view and get this block assembled. Right, so here we have it, the completely empty block except for the O-rings that are already installed, but I will uh, address some of them first. There is actually a very good uh, video by Ernest um, talking about all the ceiling points on an FX Dynamic slash Pantera, uh, which O-rings to check when you have a leak somewhere and which leak um, references to which O-ring. But as you can see, a lot of parts that make up a block like this and um, we have to put all of them back inside, of course. Some of them go into a, a specific order in order for uh, to interact with each other, like for instance, the uh, probe carrier that has to interact with the hammer, etc. So with all this set, let's get started. So of course, to get started, you need a good set of Allen keys. And the first thing we will address is that uh, cocking linkage with the pallet probe or the slug probe. In this case, it will be a 30 caliber, as you can see. Uh, it's very similar to the Dreamline probe, and this just slots it to that hole right there. It has like a keyway hole, so it can go in the wrong way. It only fits one way, just like this. If I would turn it around, you can see it won't fit properly inside. So the right way, like this, probe down or the hole down together with that pin. Tighten up this little Allen key here. Now I believe you don't have to take the complete assembly out if you want to change your probe or caliber. It can be done while it's installed in the gun, of course. With that Allen key done up tightly, of course, always make sure you don't strip out those little tiny uh, Allen keys as it's a nightmare to get them out if you strip them. Taking that block, always make sure it's nice and lubricated, uh, not overdone, just a little bit is good enough. This slots in to the back part, the top hole you see right here, just like so. There is only one way. Now you'll feel, feel a slight resistance putting it in. That is very easy done, or uh, the cause of this is actually this screw here. That screw is like your uh, bolt retainer, especially for those PRS guys. And uh, there is a small uh, ball bearing that interacts with that little hole you see right there, and that's what keeps your bolt open. So push it in past that small resistance and now it sits there. It probably interacts now with this, so that's why it has a little bit of friction and it's held nicely into place. So, next part. So next up, we'll install the cocking linkage and the cocking linkage has a small explanation. Um, the cocking linkage is held in with uh, pins like this. In the early um, versions, these pins had a uh, hex key no, had an uh, Allen key, but I see now on the updated models, there is a hex key, which is a lot uh, stronger or easier to get more grip on them, not to strip them out and get those uh, pins out. You have one pin at the front like this, and you have one pin at the back like this, and there's a small retaining uh, grub screw that sits on top of the back one in order to hold it down while you're cocking uh, your gun. So let's put those two pins to the side. Take our block and the first one will have to go in between right there as you can see. Now in order to get that pin in the correct orientation we have here that front hole so this is the one where the ball uh, detent is under and then you have an open hole just there. We gotta push it forward I'll use an allen key to do that 
and at a certain point you will see a opening just there where this pin has to go inside with the where is the lever this part sandwiched in between now i hope i can get this done easily on camera so let's align that we're gonna stick this part in this orientation right there I don't see 100% where I am, but you can always use an Allen key to stick it inside and verify where your hole is, just like this. So now everything is aligned. Take that first one, drop it in. In some cases, it will be a 1.5 millimeter, and in other cases, it of course will be a hex screw. Screwing it in all the way because if it's not in all the way it will drag on the inside and create burrs and scratches and that's not what you want. Once that is in make sure it slides freely just like this and then we're going to align that back part. That back part aligns uh, right here at the back. Same here the trick with the allen key maybe to make sure it's aligned it can be a little bit difficult so be patient like this take it out gently that second pin right in there This pin has a little thread on it, so it screws into that block. Oops, I moved it. I hope, yes, it stayed aligned. Also all the way down. Tight is good enough. Then we have this retaining grab screw that goes on top of that. I think it's a one Allen size bigger. like this make sure it moves freely perfect so that's step one your probe with your carrier and your cocking handle inside of course you can reverse that cocking handle to the other side exactly the same spot uh, you have here that grub screw uh, for the back part and the front stays exactly the same except that you have to flip around your cocking handle so that's inside next the next up we're going to focus our attention to the hammer now the hammer um, that comes in this one this is the standard one you can also upgrade it to a heavier one as you can see it has a lot more mass at the the top part there um, now for my uh, application as i want to make a bench rest gun that shoots pellets i think i will stick with the original one and the heavier one could be very handy when you uh, for instance want to do some uh, heavy slug shooting with your um, uh, dynamic or pantera but i will leave this to the side and first see what that uh, original one does the reason why we focus first on the hammer and the spring and stuff is because all this interacts with the trigger and of course with your quick tune system so this part is very simple this is actually your hammer uh, housing or i don't know hammer carrier housing this is the hammer itself which slides in just like this. Make sure it's uh, nice and well lubricated so it doesn't drag. I've seen some people polishing out everything to make it even more smooth. But for me, I'm just gonna take a little bit of lubrication. And there are two things for this that I like to use. That is Air Gun Lube by Yuma Air. Especially, uh, I use this for O-rings. And for all mechanical parts, I have some uh, molly grease. It normally sits in a big, uh, jar but i put it into a smaller one so i take just a small little dab of it not too much just to coat it slightly so everything slides smoothly like this 
the spring goes on top and then you have your uh, holder that interacts with your quick tune system right here at the back so let me quickly wipe my hands all this goes into the bottom hole the top hole was for the probe and the carrier for your cocking linkage the bottom one is for your hammer and spring this goes in this way slide it all the way forward and then this guy goes right in behind make sure you align it just a little bit like this because that little square you see right there is where that back part of your quick tune system locks into and this, this, that's what allows you to make adjustments with your power wheel so let me quickly take it out because I want to show you one more thing the way how this connects together with your quick tune system is with this small little allen screw that sit here right in behind that goes through your quick tune system and locks in that way so everything is nice and solid so make sure all those tiny screws you don't lose them so this goes back inside align it more or less like this and now we're going to try to put that quick tune system inside so the quick tune system exists out of a bunch of small parts i hope i don't drop them you have um, the back part that sits right there you have a small spring sits in front of it you have your uh, tongue wheel which houses that spring inside just like this and then that part is connected with your quick tune system and the screw here at the back just like this uh, as i mentioned before this part that uh, thing that sticks out has to fit into that hole right there but before we put this inside there is also a small spring and ball bearing that spring has to sit in that uh, hole right there whoops make sure everything stays inside of course like so align it so that spring when you take your block apart be very careful with the spring uh, Let's try to put it in without losing it. Just like this. Sits down in that hole. Perfect. And now your small ball bearing has to sit on top of that. Your Allen keys sometimes can be a little bit magnetic, which is easy to put these parts inside. But it also wants to drag it out and of course with my hands on camera whoops my hand on key one second of course wants to fly away now we are gonna put this part inside as you can see this part has a small divot at the top that interacts with that screw you see right here once you screw that down um oh no the screw here at the bottom i'm very sorry uh, once you screw that down it interacts with that small divot locking it into place so that little screw right there holds that back part in and then all the rest has to line up with uh, the ball bearing and that hole you see right there let me try to do this on camera without messing stuff up so that goes there the best way is to push everything together just like this and now as you can see it's a little bit fumbling around like so that part interacted with the, the block that's inside as you can see now it can't fall out anymore make sure your ball detent clicks with your thumb wheel hold your finger on it so it doesn't jump out take a 1.5 millimeter and then you have the screw here at the bottom that pushes onto that little block it's a fairly long screw as it has to go through all the block very long threads ah now i can feel it interact tighten it up as always don't over tighten it make sure it still turns perfect and in order for this to lock in together with that housing we saw there 
we had this very long one here. And the easiest way is to put it on your Allen key, locate the hole right there. I hope you can see it on camera and simply screw that in as well. Like so. Then the last part of the quick tune system is of course our power wheel and that's easily put in by taking your thumb, sliding this backwards so it doesn't interfere with your uh, with your power wheel and the cam of course. Now with the power wheel uh, you can see there are two springs right here, I don't know if I can take them out to show you. Most often they stay inside but sometimes they do tend to come out. So make sure when you take your power wheel uh, off you don't lose these as well. On top of these two um, springs you have two ball bearings that sit on your power wheel. Now this is quite greasy so the, uh, the balls stick to the power wheel and it's sometimes easier to put it in that way. Inside to lock it there is a screw of course. So putting it in the easiest way, put your thumb on it, slide it backwards, take your power wheel, be gentle so you don't lose those balls, put it in, release your thumb, keep holding or putting pressure on your power wheel so it doesn't fly out, take the correct allen key, I also see they have upgraded that, uh, that crew inside to a bigger size and of course I don't have the correct one on my table so let me quickly grab the correct size. Now we have a nice and beefy uh, allen key in order to do that up. Doesn't have to be super tight from factory they put it some loctite underneath so this doesn't come loose. Click with it make sure to see that everything moves together. Awesome and it seems like mine is working perfectly. Awesome. Now we got one last part here to seal off the back and the internals we have right there and that is this part. This part is actually just a little uh, nice plug that sits here on this top part. Uh, you got a small indent from the allen that uh, holds it into place so it's easy enough to slide in. Make sure it's nice and aligned, it doesn't stick out just like this. Take that little allen do that up. Now it's a little bit too far backwards. You can push it from the inside a little bit back with an Allen key if you want, if you went too far. Nice and flush and then do it up. This creates a nice end cap. So pretty beautiful. Right, what's next? Next we'll address the regulator, I put that regulator inside. Uh, one probably now has the, uh, the tendency to see if everything cocks and works. Uh, I can feel there is a lot of pressure uh, from the spring already on site so I think everything is okay. But before the trigger is even inside I wouldn't advise to cock it. There is also of course no sear yet to hold it uh, everything backwards but it seems to work fine. Afterwards once the trigger is in we can uh, completely check to see if it all works like it should. So the regulator. The regulator exists out of your uh, adjustment screw you see right here with two little o-rings. Uh, the body, let's see if I can separate it. This is your regulator body. The piston, the new one with that Delrin piece inside, your Belleville washers and of course the end of your uh, piston. To put it in, fairly simple, uh, this is the uh, configuration, don't know if you can see it well on camera, how these uh, or, uh, Belleville washers are stacked. Put it in, make sure everything is nicely lubricated, this also uh, is very important to make sure you get uh, quick recharge times and stuff like this. So everything just like this together, before you screw it in, 
there is an o-ring very deep down into that hole which uh, seals on the this part right here and if you ever get um, an air leak from the hole you see right here then probably it's that o-ring that's all the way down that is not good anymore and leaking but as i mentioned before there is a very nice video from ernest explaining all the sealing points on a dynamic slash pantera block so pulling that regulator in completely assembled i always do it a little bit upside down first with my fingers i find the threads to make sure i'm not cross threading anything i go as far as i can with my fingers Then we take an appropriate Allen key. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a five millimeter one. Screw it in. You don't have to go gorilla tight on this. The O-ring should seal it. Just like this. Then we take our regulator piston push it into the hole, make sure you don't damage the o-rings on the sharp edges, slightly twist it to push it down like this. Uh, I believe it's two and a half millimeter. Make sure the threads are going nicely and you don't cross thread anything. Everything should go smooth. Don't go cranking down on it. Screw it all the way down till you feel slight resistance like this. And then I go one full revolution backwards and this normally should give me about a hundred bar or something. And then once everything is pressurized, we can put it to the pressure we desire. Next up will be the trigger assembly. Probably the most difficult part of the trigger assembly is this small little guy right here. And that's your sear. The sear uh, is held into place with this uh, pin you have right here, which corresponds with the last hole right there. I'll show it just in a second in close up. And it will have to go in like this with a pin held into place in this orientation with a cutout to the bottom. In order to put it in, I hope I can do this easily on camera as this is for me probably the most difficult part. The pin that goes through the sear corresponds with that back hole right there. And you can see that pin goes through now I pushed it a little bit too far. You can always push it back from the other side with something very sharp. Let me gr quickly grab something. So to push it back, you can stick something into that tiny hole. And that pin comes back out, of course. So push it in not too far. So we have the ability to uh, make it connect so it goes through you can maybe see it coming peeking out of there keep it in that orientation to put our sear in i mentioned this has to go facing downwards because that second pin rides right in between right here so that second pin will have to be right there let me see if i can do this by hand and with a, a set of tweezers. So let's line it up right in between there. Slightly pushing down, finding the hole. This can be very tricky as I went already too far. Pulling it back. So I quickly grab the seat to do this as it's much easier. And I think I have it. Yes. Now, I don't know if you can see on camera, but you have to go quite deep in order to make that line up. Push it all the way through. And just like this, your sear is inside. Uh, let me see if yeah, there it is. Just like this. Perfect. Remember, we had uh, that second pin. That second pin goes into the middle hole. 
and you have to make sure your sear is underneath this. So if I push it down like this, your sear rests right on there, just like this. And that's what holds it in place. And of course, make it release the hammer and stuff. So sear is inside, even though it's a little bit fiddly, just be patient, try not to scratch stuff and things. So very easily done. Actually, not that easy, but with some patience, it's manageable. To make sure those pins don't come out, we have these uh, small Allen keys or Allen screws right here. And they screw just right on top of it. It's a one and a half millimeter. Just like this. Second one. Of course, if you want to do it easier, put it on your Allen key and then you have a better aim point. Don't crank too much down on them as you will force those pins into the back. And if you ever need to get it out, just finger tight is good enough like this. So those pins won't come out anymore. You need to push on this side if you want to take them out. But uh, I don't think many people will take that out. So next up will be the trigger itself. For the trigger itself, same principle. We have a, a pin that has to go through this uh, Pac-Man uh, kind of thing right here, just like this. Now that Pac-Man thing uh, is held on with a screw. Uh, make sure you don't lose, lose your spring right here with that screw down there. And I've already realized on the Pantera as well, uh, sometimes this is not 100% perfectly aligned. So if you have trouble getting that pin in, and we'll see in a second, loosening that screw will uh, provide it to align perfectly with that pin. And then afterwards you can tighten it back up. The way how your trigger goes in, you have your spring. The spring sits on the back side of the sear right there. The sear, let me see if I can show you better. The sear here has a small hook to it with a cutout for the spring. And your spring has to sit right on top of there. And then that pin goes through the Pac-Man right here. So the first thing you do, align your spring. Push it in. It looks like, I don't know if you can see on camera, there is some light coming through. So the Pac-Man should be pretty aligned. Put that pin inside. And I thought I had it for a second and I have it just like this. Push down on it. And as you can see, it is struggling just a little bit. So let's see if relieving the pressure on that screw right here. Makes it a lot easier to push it in. Once it's inside and you see your trigger is nice and aligned and it's not crooked, you can tighten that screw back up. like this. Nice and straight. It feels good. Let's see if we cock it. It holds back perfectly. And then let's see. It releases nice and softly. Awesome. To block that pin off, same thing right here with that tiny Allen. just like this. All right, where were we? Because I quickly had to change batteries in the camera and the memory card, as it seems like this video is gonna be quite a long one. But the trigger assembly is completely in power wheel, all the internals, so let's now focus our attention to the safety. Safety is actually this little guy right here that slots right through the block. 
it also of course has a spring and a small ball bearing and a tiny little screw to hold everything together actually it's very easy your safety slides in from this side um, it has a small cutout which probably needs to be at the bottom position but as you can see it's going can spin quite freely just like this the hole right there that is actually or the hole right here i'm sorry that is for that spring and that ball bearing so we take that ball bearing drop it in to that first hole and then the spring goes right on top of it that is what gives that nice positive click when you uh, when you uh, cycle actually your lever right here and it all gets hold together so let me put my finger on that spring so i don't lose it with a tiny screw that goes in from this side magnetic allen keys are awesome to work with but sometimes they can also work against you so screw it in like so also here just has to be tight not over tighten it now you wonder probably what holds that spring and ball detent inside so now we already have this positive click when i hold my finger on it perfect and actually what holds this inside is the trigger guard itself and that's the next thing that we will be installing make sure i don't drop the screws the screws from the trigger guard have different lengths as you can see and they all have to go in to a specific uh, spot of course so your trigger guard goes on very easily simple like this and then we have two screws with the middle size let's call it they go in to the front side like there and those here the longer one goes into this spot right here and the shorter one is for all the way at the back let's start them all up so we don't cross thread anything make sure everything is aligned as you can see that screw holds it a little bit open i'm not sure which size it is exactly there is that allen key this one now with that one screwing it in the seam closes up like this and that's still the front ones of course now you might wonder what is that little hole here at the back that is to adjust that tiny allen key you have right there and that is what actually your safety is so safety flicks nice and positive let's uh, cock it put it on safe and let's see safety is working and when we put it on fire it all works perfect then let's work this way maybe this is the connection that we can leave a little bit for later on um, the foster connection now depending on which version you have if you have the uh, bud end from the pantera for instance you can have a uh, male foster to fill up your gun at the back but you can also transfer it to here um, maybe you have a different setup where you have it on a different location it all depends but on the dynamic like i will be using it um, i will have it right here so this is your foster filling well, let's make sure i'm not bumping around all my gear and let's see if I can show you how it works this is actually the piston 
with a o-ring make sure there is no debris on it that's it into this when you force air in here from the bottom it opens up letting the air rush through into your bottle and when you uh, stop filling it the air in your gun will force that piston closed and that o-ring will seal right here so there's actually a very simple tool there's also an o-ring right here which seals against the body as well it is very simple as it threads in from the bottom this one goes in nice and deep which needs a 14 millimeter i think a spanner will be the easiest you barely have any force to grip on it so make sure you don't scar up your nice finish on your pantera so that's already installed one more part on to the next next thing on the block moving forward is actually here where all your gauges are and uh, this is that block that houses those gauges um, this is a one-piece block uh, it's a new uh, newer part on the recent uh, models of pantera and dynamic uh, where my uh, pantera which is one of the earlier versions had uh, two separate blocks to mount um, your gauges uh, what seals your gauges and what many people don't really know is actually there is an x-ring inside i'm not going to pry them out because i might damage them not a lot can go wrong with those o-rings and they are actually fit uh, or seal uh, very easily by themselves you don't need any or you don't need a lot of force to crank down on them in order for it to seal what also is very important on this part make sure i don't drop all the screws are these two o-rings right here these two o-rings is actually what seals here on the body on those two holes you see right there and that's what lets the air come into the block and let the gauges read the various pressures very important to make sure those o-rings are nicely in place lubricate them before you install them mine were actually already lubricated but i took it apart and they might have been a little bit dry from lying on my table right here so make sure they're lubricated then all the screws have the same length so you can't go wrong with that let me put the two outer ones first i always tend to grab the wrong allen key like this mounted flush allocate the holes again here when you have several screws for one part just get all the threads started do them up just ever so slightly before cranking down on them do them up equally and just like this the mounting block for the gauges is in and now you have the choice to put your gauges on just as you want these are the original ones from FX, reading to 200 and uh, 300 and uh, 250 bar. The 250 bar is actually for your regulator and the 300 is, of course, for your bottle pressure. Now, if you want to step up your game, and probably that's what I'm going to do, but I still have to figure out something because I made some um, custom covers for uh, the original gauges in the color scheme that I would like to have my uh, custom build in, but I might be upgrading to the digital ones this is actually the generation 2 from segment um, they had a first gen generation which i love to use on several of my setups but some people in the early stages had trouble um, connecting or getting in touch with the owner when they had an issue all this should be in the past i've explained it in my previous video segment now has a dedicated team in order to answer all your questions service your warranty and stuff like this so i really like using these gauges i really i see there's still some battery life inside 
um, I might be, as I said, upgrading to those right here, but I need maybe my covers to fit over it in order to have it in the good color scheme. Now, if you're very interested in these uh, very nice segment gauges, I have a link in the video description down below with a promo code where you can get these with a 10% off on your order, which is always very nice, of course. So segment gauges, I maybe will be putting later on in the video, but just for now, I'll use the original ones as it's also important to uh, tell you which gauges with 250 bar and 300 bar have to go in which position. So to mount them, this is the 300 bar, which goes at the bottom and uh, reads your bottle pressure. Whoops. Just screw them in. And now some people crank down on them, but actually you don't really have to crank down on them. Um, I'm pretty sure if I put it right here, as you can see, maybe I can go one more revolution, just like this finger tight. I can put it just like this and it will seal fine. Don't need to crank down on them with a wrench or something. It will seal very fine thanks to that X-ring inside. Um, if you get or you want to get your original gauges off, I don't know if it's with every gun like this, but FX sometimes puts uh, some Loctite on those threads. So you need to have the correct spanner, put it all the way down at the base, not too high, or you will pop that lens cover off. And then that way you should be able to get them loose. So this one goes back on. Normally these also come with a black uh, cover on them. You can see getting there, I feel the O-ring. And if I just put it hand tight, just like this, it will seal fine. I'm 100% convinced. As I said, they come normally with some black covers. I painted mine in order to match the color scheme, but I will have to see if they fit over the segment gauges, which are a benefit over some analog gauges sometimes, especially when you're into tuning and stuff. With the gauges installed, we go to another very important thing, and that is actually the valve. That is these parts you see right here, that is housed right underneath where your plenum screws onto, right there. Looking deep inside the hole, there is part number one. Uh, this I left installed in this one, as uh, it seals with some very tiny o-rings, very deep into the block, and it's a little bit cumbersome and a nightmare if they leak to get them out. But I have another valve to show you how I take those out, how I service them and put them back in. The part that is inside is actually this. This is the valve housing, just like this. And it sits with that transfer port opening right in that block somewhere underneath there. And um, that's what allows your air to go through. Your valve pin sits inside there, sealing on the O-ring at the back of this part, just like this. And then that collar seals off right here. Inside the block, that's what I mentioned, there is an O-ring in the block that seals right around this part right here. And that's the O-ring that it's a little bit a nightmare to remove. So when you take that out, you risk damaging it and then need to replace that. And that takes a lot of time and on camera, it will be very difficult. But how do I take this out? Um, normally it is, has to be done by a service uh, place or uh, somebody who really knows what he's doing because getting this out could be a little bit difficult. So what I made is this little uh, tool right here. It's a very simple basic tool and uh, let's say I would call it a um, valve puller. So what happens, You this sits in the gun, you stick this into the hole, it sits right in your valve like this, you tighten up that allen key which expands the two jaws right here and then you get yourself a nice solid connection to pull it straight out without damaging much and then to be replacing it. It's actually the same thing. You have it inside, push it in as far as you can. And then something else very important to note is that when you look down into this thing, there is a small slot right here. This small slot allows you to have access with a, uh, what you call it, flathead screwdriver to get into that little slot. And this way you can orient it into your uh, valve block to have the opening exactly matching um, your port of your barrel. So if you look down into that hole, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up. You can see this piece sitting right there with that slot nice in the direction of my barrel, of course. So that thing is part one that gets installed into a block like this. 
Then in order to put that valve in, it is actually very simple. You have your valve stem, a little, put a little bit of silicone grease, especially on that valve head as it has to go through that o-ring that I just showed you. So a nice smooth fit is always nice. Not damaging the end or the o-ring in the end of the valve housing. What goes on top is your spring just like this. Then we have this little part right here, that black part. It's actually uh, something that guides your, your spring or keeps your spring nicely and aligned. And then this goes into that part right here. This is how it gets has to get assembled. You see that black part sometimes stays behind in that collar. But let's put it in one by one. So your valve pin goes in this, this way. Make sure it's nice and aligned. Put it in straight so you don't force anything or don't ruin anything. Just like this. Then we have the valve spring that goes on top of it. Let's take that little part out. It comes out by itself. That little hat sits on this way. On top of your spring like that. And then we have the little cap. The little cap also has an o-ring inside which seals off that valve pin of course. So. Um, if you get a leak from here, that's most probably the tiny o-ring inside this cap. But as I mentioned before, Ernest did a great uh, thing on a sealing video with all the sealing surfaces on a Pantera or a Dynamic. Now to close it off, you can see it has a quite strange opening. So let me get the correct tool for that. And the correct tool for the job is actually some pliers like this. They're specially made for uh, like those retaining clips and stuff. But it also works perfectly for this right here. So let me make sure I'm holding it in the correct orientation so I don't ruin anything. Like this. And you might feel some small resistance. It doesn't need to be super tight. It will seal by itself. like so that's inside your valve is right there so we're getting close most of the parts are in now you still have those two holes right here right next to those two holes you still have a small brass plug right there that's actually a brass plug that is used to um, to drill out the block let me quickly take it out so i can show it to you it's just like a, a small piston with a tiny o-ring on it. Just like this. That seals the hole right there that goes all the way through the block where the air passage from here comes. I don't know if you can see some light flashing through it. This is where the air comes from your back part, whatever you put on it. We'll have a look at that in just a second. And that just blocks off this part because they needed a way to drill all the way through the block and that is what this plug is actually for to just plug off that hole like this then we have two holes right here and you might have seen in different videos that these uh, two holes uh, actually serve a purpose and the bottom hole especially the bottom hole um, it can, it can house uh, some um, parts like, for instance, a bottle adapter, so you can mount yourself a bottle at the front and not only at the back. Um, it can uh, give you uh, maybe access for a drop down like the one from Sabre Tactical to be able to mount still your Arca rail together with a bottle underneath. So that is that what that hole actually is for. The, the hole right here on top, uh, I've never seen anybody opening this, but um, it looks like a very similar hole to that one. Not really sure what this hole is for. Probably FX has some future plans to use to utilize this hole for some other accessories that will come out. Maybe for other variations as this is a 
dynamic block and it can be virtually anything you want. So these two holes get blocked off with these uh, brass screws inside the hole down at the bottom there is an o-ring which seals and that's why those plugs can just seal off that's one that is two just screw them down the o-ring has to do its job like this don't have to crank too much on them as the o-rings seal everything then at the front there is still one important part we have to install and that is actually this uh, barrel support housing uh, kind of thing which doesn't only support uh, the barrel or houses the barrel but has a very important function and that is because um, your plenum actually sits right on top of here the barrel runs right through it and if you would have your barrel just inside um, your uh, your plenum the air has to go one way around in order to go uh, through your regulator pressure up and then release it into your barrel to seal off that barrel from the plenum we have this actually there are two o-rings deep down into that block that seal one here on the neck and then there is one o-ring right here which seals on your barrel this is very important to seal off your barrel from um, your plenum otherwise you will have a leak with this installed the air goes around this part into that hole right there and therefore your regulator controls the pressure in your plenum and when you release the valve your air goes right down there into that hole i don't know if you can see it very well on camera it goes right there in beneath into your transfer port and that's why they say the air is just there it doesn't have to travel through any weird spaces it just has a nice very big opening i can put my finger almost right into there and therefore is this part that's to seal off your barrel um, into your plenum and make, making it a separate um, air pressure chamber or making sure the pressure from your plenum goes into the right places don't know if i'm explaining it all very clearly but when you take it apart you start understanding the genius and brilliance of the design of that uh, dynamic block pantera block and how cool it is and how cool it's made as you can see there is now a space in between that color that uh, seals your barrel where the air from your plenum can rush down into your transfer port to tighten this up i use a spanner like this It's not my most uh, pristine tool but it does the job just hand tight should be good enough then at this point we only have a few parts left on the table this part you may probably know this is a part from um, your uh, arca rail that goes on top of it that sits right there but that we will use in a future video now i would like to explain that the very early models most probably everybody had it fixed by now um, that valve pin this uh, hole wasn't drilled deep enough and on higher pressures not on lower pressures but especially if you wanted to shoot 40 grains um, with the pantera in 22 caliber that valve pin would come out just a little bit too far knocking on this part you see right here and therefore bending some of those uh, valve pins the early ons now they have beefier valve pins than the, the skinnier ones and if you wonder why mine is so shiny i drilled this hole out just to make sure that my valve pin has all the travel way it needs um, in order not to bump against anything but as i mentioned fx has fixed this problem and most uh, panteras and uh, dynamics have this uh, uh, thing fixed as they realized it very on fairly early on when the first panteras uh, were released so shouldn't worry about it but if you have it apart you can always check it of course with that said there is one part left and that is the backside now the backside is very versatile 
um, you can put many different configurations on a Pantera or a dynamic block. You can have a folding stock, for instance. You can have a fixed stock with an AR-15 uh, that can slide in and out. You can have, for instance, um, like the Pantera has the fixed part with a bottle underneath, which is very cool. I have it on my Pantera. I really like it. Then the dynamic uh, came out with uh, the block you see right here, which allows you to screw on a bottle at the back. Uh, put the cheek weld over it and then you had a bottle at the back giving you a lot more air and still have a more or less uh, the same look as the Pantera. You can go either way with it. For this build I'm going to use the block right here which allows you to connect a um, bottle adapter into and therefore I can mount a bottle at the back and then maybe another bottle at the front but later on more on that. So this part Let's take those screws out for just a second. Screws all the same length, exactly the same screws. This is the part where your air, your air travels through. So your bottle adapter sits here on this side, just like this. You screw your bottle on, the air goes through the bottle adapter into that tiny hole there at the bottom. And it comes out this way. This way lines up with the hole you see right there. That's what I showed you with uh, that connects to that uh, plug you have right here, which blocks off the, the hole they drilled right through the stock or through the block. And then this part will sit right on top of this. Make sure that O-ring is nicely lubricated as this is also a sealing area. Take the first screw maybe just to have everything lined up. And that is one, two, number three, and then number four. like this. And then the last part we need to install is the bottle adapter. As I mentioned, I'll be using a bottle at the back. Now we can just screw it in just like this and have it sit there. But then you might have the risk when you uh, unscrew your bottle that your bottle adapter will come with it and therefore uh, completely screw out, which is not what you want. So we'll put some little bit of blue Loctite on it. As I have it here, just a small drop. And that's more than enough. So then what I do is screw it in, make sure the threads connect. What I like to do when I put Loctite on my screws is screw it in, screw it a little bit back out so the Loctite gets nicely divided between all the screws and then put it on just like this. I will take a, uh, what is this, 24 millimeter? 24 millimeter, yes. Socket, put it over it and put it tight. You can also put it in a, in a vise, but with the Loctite on it, it should be perfect like this. Let it rest maybe overnight so the Loctite can harden and therefore have a good solid connection.
Right, so there you have it guys, a fully reassembled FX dynamic block. All the parts inside fully functioning like it should. Now you might have seen that I forgot to install some parts like the cover right here, uh, a grip and stuff like this, but that's for part two of the video where I will be uh, creating my custom uh, FX dynamic with all the bells and the whistles like I would like to have it. So I'll make part two of the video as this one probably becomes already quite extended with installing everything. But now for those interested, you can have a video to reference uh, how some parts are installed, which parts are important, how they all interact and connect. So you can always reference to this video as well. If you might have any questions regarding what you have seen on the video, how some parts go together, put them in the comment section down below, hit me up on Instagram, whatever, and I'll be more than happy to help you sort out what you need to know. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for part two of this video, where I'll be building up my custom 30 caliber bench gun with this block right here. As always, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you back in the next one. Bye.